Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for Monday, August 12th, 2019. Well, Doug got it this morning. The, the markets are under a little bit of pressure this morning. During the weekend, we have uh, China uh, once again fluctuating uh, the their currency setting its benchmark price lower um, once again for the third time just a little bit lower creating some currency fluctuations we have protests in hong kong escalating tremendously actually uh, spilling over into the airport closing um, or stopping all flights in and out of Hong Kong uh, for a period of time as that clash continues to grow and actually becomes quite violent between residents of, of, of Hong Kong that are protesting for greater democracy and less Chinese control. And um, then we have Goldman Sachs over the weekend lowering um, economic growth um, targets and actually raising fears of potential recession. So all of these things combined and the, the market's got kind of a, a dour look this morning. And currently, as I speak at this very moment, these have been fluctuating around tremendously this morning. We're down 166 points. We've been in the Dow futures. We have been down, uh, the last time I looked, 234 points. And of course, we have bounced back higher. So lots of fluctuation in the morning futures with all of these things going on. It's hard to know where we're actually going to open today because of this price volatility, even in the futures this morning. But clearly there's a little fear rising in the market and we're going to have to pay attention to that. So what does that mean for the chart? Well, what it really means is that we run the, run the risk, the potential of failing, of creating a lower high here in the market. Now, let me, let me speak to that just a second before everyone starts running for cover thinking, oh, Campbell, all he, all he's, he's just a great big bear. I, I'm not, guys. Um, I'm looking at the technical pattern of the chart. If we fail, break down through our 50-day moving average, rally up toward our 50-day moving average, and we create a failure pattern here around that 50 day we have literally created our first lower high in the market which would suggest more downside and we can see that um, you know all we have to do is look um, back in the past not very long ago fail rally lower high fail that begins that downtrend now I'm not saying that we could uh, turn into a straight up bearish market that goes on for uh, months and months and months. Just that that possibility does exist here that we could see that failure. So I think it's going to be really critical today that we hold on and I'm showing uh, the SPY here that we hold on to these lows. If we push down below these lows, particularly a Friday and start stripping that little bit of support out, falling into this little bit of a gap that we have here that would really i think embolden the bears we need to see those bulls really defend this area because if they don't here's what i think we could see um, if we drop and fail here at the 50-day moving average it is not out of the question just like we saw right over here where we fail the 50 day and move down to the 200 day. It's actually a very, very common pattern. We call it the blue ice failure in uh, hit run candlesticks and right way options. And that failure pattern um, normally suggests an attack of the 200 day moving average. And since we didn't make it there in the SPY, and we also didn't make it there in the queues, that potential certainly does exist, that failure, if we uh, don't hold these Friday, uh, Friday lows and push down th um, through here, we could see that extreme selling coming in. And that's where panic can really start to build in the market. If we see that lower high failure and we get that extreme um, selling, and, and, and unfortunately, this creates significant technical damage in the charts that makes it difficult 
to recover from. We can see the same kind of patterns if we look back in past charts, you know, that failure down, rally back, and we just continue uh, that process. So let's watch this pretty carefully. Let's hope uh, cooler heads prevail, that those bulls are actually able to hold on to some of these price supports, lifting us back up. Let's take a quick look at the diamonds here now diamonds also showing us that same kind of risk that possible failure but notice that the diamonds has held the 200 day moving average twice so it is possible we push back if we do fail here that we push back down here and the overall market finds that support right in here but I think in likelihood what we're going to end up seeing if we do get that kind of a severe sell-off is we will see us break down past that 200 day moving average so watch this pretty carefully if that does occur we could see some real panic start to form up in the market if these lows fail and we really start uh, drifting to the downside so be careful with your trading watch this pretty closely now what if we don't get bearish what if the bulls do defend then we're going to want to watch these price levels up here around the 50-day moving average notice our short-term moving averages are moving down creating this zone of resistance in price and those technical indicators and that zone of resistance we'll have to watch pretty carefully if we if the bulls do defend and we start to rise up we'll have to watch that area for those price resistance and that's really across all charts right now if we take a look at iwm iwm on friday um, already showing that pretty ugly inside day here on friday and now gapping lower um, uh, and actually looking like we're going to breach those lows here at the open this morning on IWM. IWM is still a very critical situation here on IWM, pushing into that, um, uh, continuing to fail at that downtrend line, not looking very healthy here. And it's going to be really important if IWM fails below this really important level of support in the chart we could see some serious ugliness come into play here. So let's keep a close eye on this. Hopefully that doesn't occur. Let's take a look at um, the VIX really quick. Now that VIX is that place we look for fear in the market. And I have been mentioning this for a long time now that I, the first sell-off in the market is obviously um, ugly and scary and usually quite violent. But if you guys remember, I have been saying that the real selling won't begin until we find a place here in the VIX if we happen to hold support or hold this downtrend as support and those sellers come back in. That's where real selling can truly begin. That's where the real technical damage in the charts begin to happen. So if we were to really spike up here, just keep in mind we can really get ugly here very fast and see levels up here come into play of 30 and, and 50 handles in the VIX. And really all that is is just that we find that higher low in um, in the VIX and we spike up and we spike up. So watch those closely. We find those lows and we spike up. So hopefully that's not the case today, but we will want to keep a pretty close eye on this. If that fear really starts to come in, if that Friday low really gives up, um, we could see this get pretty ugly pretty fast. So just keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at T21. 22 whoops t2122 is the four week new high new low ratio it's just a, a a division of all the stocks making new highs and those making new lows and you can see we had spiked up pretty high in just two days of trading rallying uh, back up really strongly and then that uh, pulled back on Friday with that selling that came into the market. Even though we rallied back up on Friday, um, there just didn't seem to be a major response back up here in T2122. So now with this gap lower this morning, we it could be sending us back down here toward that uh, bullish reversal zone. Let's keep in mind um, that um, 
that this may be the thing that holds us right here that we get oversold too quickly and then we catch that bounce so let's watch that carefully but right now looks like we're heading back into that bullish reversal zone here in the market i want to point out the fact that just because we get down there doesn't mean we can't stay down there for a period of time so watch that pretty closely we can move down into this area and stay down here for a period of time as that market um, pushes back and corrects a little bit so watch that pretty carefully and just plan your trading very carefully because there's going to be a significant amount of price volatility if that fear begins to spike back up it can be it can make for very challenging markets where we get um, um, big intraday possible reversals driven mostly by news events and things like that or that great big gap that occurs kind of like this morning where everyone's feeling pretty bullish when we go into the close on friday and then suddenly we're bearish so we can experience quite a little bit of that uh, fluctuation back and forth um, with volatility and fear this high in the market let's take a um, look at what's going on in our economic calendar today our economic calendar has little for the market to react to today so really we're going to be probably driven by um, earnings reports and um, news we do have the treasury budget report here at 2 p.m i wouldn't expect that to move the market around at all today so um, be really, really careful. Um, not much here news wise that's going to move us around on that calendar. Now on the earnings front, we have just short of 130 companies reporting earnings, but we don't have a tremendous amount of big notable reports. A lot of very, very small, um, uh, companies reporting today. We do have a couple of big days this week. Um, of earnings but our earnings reports are really starting to dwindle down and though we may have some of those notables coming we'll just have to uh, keep an eye on the market for example uh, today uh, GOLD um, will be reporting it looks like it might be getting a little bit of gap up this morning but that would be mostly due to fear I think um, whoops let's go to a daily uh, fear um, in the market uh, bringing in uh, some higher prices in gold I don't think they have reported yet so a uh, few things like that that are going to be reporting today but I don't wouldn't expect them to be just massive market movers like uh, like a Google or an Amazon would be so um, keep an eye on that so with that everyone um, if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you find this information helpful in this preparation for the day um, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, folks, the, the purpose of these videos is not to predict which way the market is going to go. It's to look at the market factors and how we need to maybe be preparing, how we want to approach the market for the day. I, I in no way, shape, or form intend to predict the market. Don't want to do it. And I don't believe anybody can, to tell you the truth. So um, what we want to do is we want to look at those market factors and, and try to decide how we're going to approach the market and how that may affect our trading. If you find these videos helpful, um, please make sure to uh, share them with other friends and family. Share them on Facebook and Twitter. That's perfectly acceptable. And I thank you for doing that because that helps us uh, spread this information to more folks. Also, please click those thumbs up buttons and leave a comment. Every single time you do that helps the algorithm show these videos to more people and that also helps us with growth. It truly is you guys responsible for the growth of this channel. Um, I do my very best, best to put out good quality content, but without you um, responding positively to these um, videos, it won't grow. So thank you guys. Um, the growth is really attributed to you and I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you very much for all of your help and support of this channel.
Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up. Now, I got to tell you, I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking for short trades just yet, but um, we know that they are going to be there and we're going to have to start watching for them very, very carefully. But there are still some stocks that look pretty good and show some strength if you're looking for some safety or something in the market. Take a look at Starbucks. Starbucks holding up well, and it's even indicating that it's going to open maybe even modestly higher this morning. Starbucks holding up quite well, continuing to maintain this trend. Um, it might be a place to look if you're looking for that bullish trade. Take a look at Snap. Snap held up really well, rallying back. Now this morning it looks like Snap may be getting just a little tiny weakness with the rest of the market, but it has held up really, really well considering um, the overall and the market that we're in um, doing quite well. Now, charts that are starting to show signs, uh, maybe a few sh signs of trauma, uh, a few signs of trouble, you might want to look to stocks like Lulu. Lulu breaking down, rallying back up, and showing this potential failure pattern here. And by the way, that just happens to be right around that 50-day moving average. If that continues that process failing back below that 50, I would expect a break below this low um, eventually. So watch that closely. If Lulu really begins to drop and fail, there's going to be significant number of these stocks forming up and setting up this way so keep watching for those that failure anywhere near or around that 50-day moving average could be a critical sign of of technical damage to come in those charts another chart that's looking pretty good and is one of those areas where you might seek a little bit of safety is aig aig holding up quite well here um overall looking uh, looking pretty strong and hanging in there so that might be a place to look for some potential safety um, overall in the charts we see stocks like uh, however procter and gamble procter and gamble making that rally back and showing us a little bit of risk here and that possibility of that lower high failure and I would keep a close eye on that, pretty close eye on that, if that were to fail. Now, this holds is holding above its 50-day moving average considerably well, but um, that failure bringing us back down here could be um, serious and one we'd want to watch pretty closely. How about restoration hardware? I've been talking about restoration hardware for a while. That did finally follow through, breaking to the upside. Friday showed a little bit of pressure with the rest of the market. But as long as we hold above our trend, Restoration Hardware has an opportunity to maybe move higher. So here, as you can see, we've got this back and forth, this back and forth in these charts that we could go either direction. And that's really showing you the risk of these markets and how we're going to have to be very, very careful on how we trade them. Lots of volatility, lots of price action movement that can create a lot of stress overall in these markets. So if you're struggling as a trader, if you're finding this market to be extremely challenging, then just remember, you don't have to trade every single day. Um, you know, one of the things that it took me a long time to learn as a trader, I made this mistake for so long, I hate to admit it. I, I used to think as a trader, I had to trade every day to be successful. And that's just absolutely not true. As a matter of fact, what I found out is, when I, found, uh, when I found myself giving up my edge in the market, if I couldn't read that chart very clearly, if it was, if it was mucky, if it was messy, kind of like we're, our, our markets are right now, it was better for me to stand aside and trade less. If I traded less during periods like this and then focused my attention to the places where I had the better edge, I traded less, but I made a lot more money. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's no shame in standing aside when the market is throwing these kind of challenges at us that we stand aside and just protect that capital. Because let's, let's face it, a big part of our job as traders is not only to grow our capital, but to protect our capital in times of market stress like this. So keep that in mind. With that, everyone, I want to wish you all the very best today. I want to wish you great profits. 
Remember, click that thumbs up button, leave a comment. You guys are awesome. Have a great day. We'll see you all right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Take care now.